uh, I don't know that we necessarily struggle. I think the, one of the biggest things is just the enormity of it, uh, how it's grown. You know, like I said, we we started out with 11 families or 11 people eight years ago, and I think last week we served 300 and something families. You know, so it's enormous numbers. It's kind of sad that it's come to that point, but you know, at least we're here to help. In Montag County, there are more than 300 families that are in need of food and other supplies. However, there is a beacon of hope that is dedicated to helping these people. That is, Nakona Ministries. And this is their God-given mission. Well, I think at the beginning, my wife gave me the encouragement to, to move forward with this. But, uh, you know, she's been, a, she's been a big positive. But as the years have gone by, I believe it's been David Leonard, Dave and Barb that, you know, they're just my mentors. They're who I look for, you know. That's where I want to be when I'm their age. I'm the president. And my activities and job is to uh, take care of things like ordering the food, uh, picking up the food. I am lovingly known as a Hand Ups program manager, and I guess that consists of a little bit of everything. Kind of, I'm in, a little bit in charge of volunteers. Um, I uh, go for grants. Um, I work here on a Thursday and Wednesday and whatever day, other day that is necessary. Nakona Ministries has not always been there as a strong symbol for those in need. Like most, it had a humble origin. We moved from uh, Nakona Hills Community Church. And that was before the big church was built, and it was in their, the room where they have dinners and, and things like that. And we served 11 families the first week that we were opened. It, it was so easy. <laughs> Serving 11 families, you know, making 11 boxes of food. I guess the hardest thing that I found was getting the, the food in from Wichita Falls and taking it out of the case and put, put it in on shelves. We uh, were out riding around one day, went to the water department and saw this building here and, and uh, got some information and Dave called the guy and everybody was like, good luck getting a hold of him and one call, boom. He called me back the next day and I asked him if we could rent it and he said, well, how would you like to buy it? I said, we don't have any money. We can't buy it. So he said, how about if I give it to you? And he did. Don't need the building. And it was just wonderful. This was a, a, this was a real blessing, this building was. And we came by it in a way that I would have never expected. A day at the Nakona Ministries is busy and everyone must work hard to keep things smooth. The first two hours are hectic <laughs> because it seemed like, well, people will wait outside to come in at nine o'clock in the morning. Well, we offer uh, food. That's our number one goal is to help feed the needy. We do school supplies. I know we have uh, uh, a clothing room and, and different things like that. I mean, we've got people that are poor. We've got people that are you know, veterans, we've got older people, we've got uh, Spanish community, we've got, you know, just the whole, the whole realm of the community now, which is pretty awesome. It's, it's everybody, it's, it's not one person, it's, it takes all of the volunteers, you know, everybody's got certain, certain jobs that they do and it just runs like a machine most of the time. When you're dealing with 300 families, that's a lot of work and a lot of hustle bustle. It has, uh opened my eyes to the community. I know an awful lot more people than I ever did before. And as you can probably tell, I'm not a native Texan. So uh, it, it takes a little time to, uh, uh, to get to know the folks, but it, it's, it's very rewarding just being part of the community. We, my husband and I have sat a lot of times and I said, but what would we do if we weren't doing that? sit and watch television, you know, we're both up in age and, you know, we don't work or anything, so what would you do, you know, and don't want to travel that much, we've done enough of that, so. Be quite honest, I wish I could do this full time, you know, and, and be able to survive. Well, I hope we're a beacon, a beacon of, of light in the community, you know, I hope we've 
you know, God will, God will guide us into whatever services he wants for us. So, and I hope, you know, Dave and Barb are able to get around <laughs> in 10 to 20 years. If I was to be honest, I wish it would be completely empty because then nobody would be in need. That would be the most, that would be the best case scenario, but I know that's not going to happen. There are many influences for the ministry's uprising. However, there is one source that has been the driving force for their cause. I never thought when we moved to Nakona that we would be heading up a ministry for our Lord. And uh, never, ever thought that. And it just kind of gently got into it, and little by little it grew, but I think that was his way. I'm not the one that's doing this, you know. My husband and I talk an awful lot about that because um, we're the ones that are in the trenches, us and all of our volunteers. But if it wasn't for him, we wouldn't even be in the trenches because he's our provider, you know. And if it wasn't for him providing the money or the food or, or the people, we wouldn't, even, we wouldn't be able to even be here, so. It's a God thing. It's all meant to be. 12,027 mouths fed, 5,353 families served, 3,834 children, and 1,957 senior citizens. It's more than just poor people.